everyone, I'm Sol. This special project is an aid of raising money for the Wood Street Mission, a children's charity supporting children and families in low-income households around Manchester and Salford. It's been a tough year for everyone, so if you can donate anything, then it would be so much appreciated. The story I'm going to read today is The Magic Bauble by 10-year-old Isabel Thompson. The week before Christmas, my family and me were putting up our tree. That year, we had bought a white tree, which was quite unusual for us. We had planned to get a green one, but the white one somehow drew us in. We saw it in the shop, and it just stood out so much. It was so icy and magical looking, so we just had to get it. We brought it home and started to set it up. We were nearly finished, but then I noticed one last bauble in the box. It was right at the very bottom of the box, but I could see it sparkling as if it was winking at me. I took the bauble out of the box and hung it up on the tree. There was something special about that bauble, but I didn't know what. We left the tree and went to make some gingerbread men. And when we had finished, I walked back into the front room. The bauble caught my eye. It was as if it had changed colour. But it couldn't have, could it? I forgot about it and I went to bed. The next morning, I was in my room writing my letter to Santa. And then suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw it. The bauble. But it couldn't be. Could it? How in a million years could it have got there? I rushed downstairs to go and tell my mum. She didn't believe me and told me to put it back on the tree, which I did. A couple of days passed and I had been keeping my eye on that bauble, but nothing unusual happened. Finally, Christmas Eve had arrived. I was excited, but also nervous. I always wonder if I've been good enough and if Santa will stop at my house and give me gifts. I hope he will. I really do. It's finally bedtime. We put out the cookies and milk for Santa. As I put down the carrot for Rudolph, I noticed the shining bauble. It started to spin. And when it stopped, I saw him. Father Christmas in the bauble waving to me. Oh, so the bauble wasn't bad or scary after all. It was just a magical bauble sent from Lapland. And that was the story of the magical bauble by Isabel Thompson. Once again, we'd like you to donate anything you can, any amount, to the great charity of the Wood Street Mission. Hi there, I'm Shelley King and I'm going to read you a story, a little Christmas story today. And um, on behalf of the, I'm here on behalf of the, an appeal for the Wood Street Mission. And they're wonderful people at Wood Street because they, they care for disadvantaged children in Greater Manchester. So whatever donation you can manage would be very gratefully accepted. So here goes. The story is called Best from Worst, and it's by Matthew Gordon. It was the month of December, and Christmas Day was but a week away. In the city of Manchester, people weren't accustomed to seeing snowfall in that very magical month. But that year, the streets were bathed in white. In the shadow of this city, there lived a little girl named Sarah. Although she didn't think of herself as little. She was 10 years old, after all. She was going to big school next year, and little people don't go to big school. Although Sarah's life had been hard, by most people's standards, she always held on to that very special belief in the magic of Christmas, that in one day, every year, 
The people she loved smile, the kind of smile that casts anything bad to one side. That year, there was only one thing she wanted. Each day, she would walk through the park next to her house and watch the other children racing around on their bikes. Nothing sounded more freeing than riding around on a new bicycle, preferably green. Sarah's parents were not particularly lucky people, but they worked exceptionally hard for everything they had. Her father worked as many jobs as he could find, and her mother cleaned the houses of the neighboring estate. They never complained, and they always tried their best to make Sarah feel like the most loved little girl in the world. That morning, one week before Christmas, Sarah was eating her breakfast in the usual manner, calm and joyful. Her father was sitting at the table looking over a lot of busy pieces of paper, red lettering, exclamations all over the pages. Dad, what are you reading? Oh, just silly letters from silly people. Where's Mum? She's at work, sweetheart. The Hickmans are having some sort of party later on, and so I'll be walking with you today. On the walk to school that day, they talked of many things. Why did the snow fall the way it did? Is it true that snowmen are alive, like in the film? But the most important two phrases spoken that morning were these. Dad, Dad, did you look at that bike I showed you? We'll see, sweetheart. We'll see. That was how Sarah knew she wouldn't be riding a bike that year. Sarah was working especially hard that term, doing her homework when she could have been playing outside in the park all to bring that struggling maths grade up to standard. The school bell rang for the end of class that day, and everyone raced out the door to get back to the ever-enticing snow outside. However, as Sarah wandered out of the classroom, staring at her feet, Mrs. Fisher stopped her. Before you go, Sarah, I wanted to say something to you. Mrs. Fisher was quite a stern teacher. So Sarah was not looking forward to whatever came next. I, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to say how very proud of you I am for all the extra work you've been doing. I know it's still a few days before the end of term, but she reached into her bag and pulled out the most beautiful, shining bar of chocolate Sarah had ever seen. Before Sarah could say a word, the bar was gently pressed into her hand. Merry Christmas, Sarah, and well done. Keep up the good work. Sarah raced out of school that day, happy as happy could be. She had not eaten a chocolate bar since, since, well, she couldn't remember when. She could hardly even remember the smooth, milky taste that came with each bite. She could have gobbled the whole thing up there and then. But then it would be over. She was going to make it last. The walk home was a trudge. The snow stuck to her shoes. They pulled her down to the earth. However, she never gave up pushing through all 
so she could get home and have that first bite of chocolate. She needed no more motivation than that. However, a few streets away from her house, bundled up in a blanket against the wall, half covered in snow, was an old man, even older than her grandfather. That was saying something. As she paused to look at him, she could see that he was shivering, barely able to stop his teeth from chattering. Excuse me, sir. What? What? Um, uh, am I in your way? No, no, of course not. I just, I just wanted to see if you were okay. You look, you look cold. Do I? No, no, it's, it's just a wee bit of snow. It'll pass. Well, I, 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 I wouldn't want to be out here, and I, I've only been out for ten minutes. Really? <sighs> I'm fine. Well, thank you. Okay, said Sarah. Bye. Sarah turned away. But something just didn't feel right. That man could barely speak he was that cold. She looked down at the chocolate bar, this gift she had received just for doing a few sums correctly. The man looked up in surprise as the chocolate bar was placed in his lap. What? What are you doing? Please. Please, you need it more than I do. You shouldn't be talking to strangers. Where are your parents? Of course. Wait here. I'll be back in a moment. Sarah plodded through the snow at great speed toward her house. She charged through the front door. Mom, 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 come quick. She dragged her mother back to the wall, but the man wasn't there. The blanket, the impression in the snow, even the chocolate bar, all were gone. Sarah swore she was telling the truth. There had been a man there, and he needed their help. But she couldn't understand why he hadn't waited for them. When they were safely back, in the warmth and comfort of their living room, her mother sat her down on the sofa, held her hand, and looked deep into her eyes. Sarah, your father has been talking to Santa Claus, and he can't find your bite this year. He's looked everywhere, but he can't find one for you. So he wanted to know if there was anything else you might have wanted. No, 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 it's okay. I'm sorry, sweetheart. She could see the tears forming in her mother's eyes. A week passed, and it was Christmas Eve. Sarah had gone to bed quite early that night, not to sleep, but to cry. She knew not to get excited for any bike tomorrow. And as she lay there, staring at the ceiling, rubbing her eyes, she, um, 
she heard a slight bang coming from downstairs. Now, not, not enough to wake anyone, but enough for an attentive girl like Sarah to hear. She crept down the stairs, avoiding the creaky floorboards as she went, and found herself at the door to the living room. Just in front of her was a man in a large crimson red coat fringed with the whitest fur. His back was turned to her as he made final adjustments to a sparkling ocean blue bicycle with Sarah written in graffiti over the central frame. He, he peeked over his shoulder at her. It was meant to be blue, correct? It was the man from before. Although he didn't look so cold and thin now. Thank you, thank you. Although, actually, I, I had wanted it to be green. Oh, it's, it's okay, though. I love it. Ah, yes, green. Of course. Even Santa makes mistakes. He clicked his fingers and a shimmer coasted along the bike, transforming its paint to an emerald green. To look at it, you would never have pictured it any other way. But to... how come the bike was there? She was told Santa couldn't find it. There's always a bike to be found for a good little girl. Sorry. I should say a big girl now, shouldn't I? You going to big school and all? I have something else for you. He reached into his pocket and pulled out the chocolate bar, intact and as beautiful as the moment she first laid eyes on it. But why? I. I gave it you. And now, said Santa, I am giving it back. You gave this to me without being asked. Nothing compelled you but the goodness of your heart. And a good heart like that deserves to race through a park on Christmas Day. He patted the seat of the bicycle, shot her a beaming smile, and turned back toward the fireplace. But Santa, why were you sitting out there in the cold like that? Because it's often in the very worst of times that you see the very best. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Merry Christmas, Santa. With that, he turned toward the fireplace, clicked his fingers, once more, and vanished. <laughs>